Call this uh, meeting to order of the De Montpelier Development Review Board. Welcome. And uh, I'm going to introduce the board mem members here tonight, uh, starting at my right. Hello, Catherine Burgess. Okay. And then uh, on Zoom, Abby. Hi, Abby White. Joe? Hi, I'm Joe Kiernan. Who else? Michael? As Michael was Rochak. Good evening, everyone. And Gene. Hi, Gene Leon. Good evening. Did I miss anybody? Nope. All righty. Everybody, that's all the members. Perfect. Okay, at this point, I'll turn it over to Meredith to review the. Um, remote meeting procedures and process uh, and go ahead. All right. Oh, you know what? All that work getting everybody in and I didn't open my document. Give me one second, folks. Sorry about that. Yeah, I have something that I need to show in case there's somebody watching on Orca who can't, who isn't logged in, but wants to. All right, so um this is some of this intro is just for people who are on orca and want to log in and some of this is for everybody else who's logged in and hasn't done this kind of a meeting before um so um if you are watching this meet meeting over orca streaming you can participate in tonight's development review board meeting via the zoom platform um, you can either use the video access by using this link here. You can just type that into your web browser, or you can go to the city agendas page and click on tonight's DRB meeting agenda, and the link is going to be in there. Alternatively, you can call into this phone number. I'm going to ask for the meeting ID, plug this meeting ID in, and it will log you into the meeting so that you'll be able to hear and you'll be able to speak. Um, and ask questions um, and you'll be able to hear the whole meeting. Um, if somebody is trying to log in and is having problems, please email me and I will do my best to help you get in. Um, for those attending via, via Zoom, please note that turning on your video is optional. You don't need to do that. Um, for everyone attending, please keep your microphone on mute when you're not speaking. This is gonna reduce background noise um, and as I said earlier, if you're on phone to both mute and unmute, you press star six. Um, if you are in the Zoom, if you're in the Zoom meeting itself over the computer, there's a chat function available. Please use that only for troubleshooting or logistics questions. Um, if you have a question or comment about tonight's application, then please raise your hand either physically or using the raise hand button on your toolbar. Um, and then for those on the phone, you can press star nine and this will do a hand that everybody here can see. Um, you can also, if you need to, if no other way is working, you can just state your name during a, a quiet point. Um, and then we'll, we'll get you on the list to comment and the chair will, will recognize you when you get through the list. We have a lot of people today who want to comment. Um, for everyone wanting to comment, um, please wait until the chair has recognized someone to participate and then make sure to provide your full name and address for the record. Um, you know, I think I know that a lot of people here tonight um, are part of different groups. Um, so we're just going to ask that people try not to, to repeat too much what other people have already commented on. You can definitely say, hey, I agree with X and Y points, but we've got a lot of people we want to try and get through. We want to make sure everybody has time to speak, especially about anything that's new um, presented before the board. Um, and do note that you can speak on one part of the application and then the chair can recognize you again later on for another part if there's only specific parts of it that you want to comment on. Um, in the event that I get notice 
via email that there are members of the public that are unable to access the meeting, it will have to be continued to a time and place certain. And I will now hand the meeting back over to the chair. Okay, thank you, Meredith. Um, and uh, I would uh, just like to reiterate on that, this uh, the raise your hand function. Um, if you'd like to be recognized to speak, speak it's gonna be real important tonight. Uh, we got a lot of people and uh, we do not want this to turn into a sort of a lot of back and forth and whatnot, just to make sure everyone gets a chance to speak and we get through uh, tonight's agenda and get to hear everybody. Um, at this point, I would entertain a motion to approve the agenda for this evening's meeting. So-called yes. motion. Motion by Jean. Second. Second by Catherine. All those in favor of approval of tonight's meeting? Catherine? Yeah, yeah Catherine? Uh, yes. Abby? Yes. Joe? Yes. Uh, Jean? Yes. And uh, I forgot one person in there. Oh, Michael? Yes. Perfect. And it approves unanimously. Um, all righty. Uh, so this evening, uh, we do have a, uh, you know, a lot of people in attendance uh, for this meeting. We'd like to uh, move this as efficiently as possible and get everyone's comments on the record. Um, I think I will say that public comment in this process is uh, intended to be um, very helpful. Um, and I, I believe that members on the board, uh, you know, truly believe that, you know, public comments are integral in making better applications. Um, with that being said, we do want to make sure that the comments are, um, you know, as focused as possible on the actual application here, um, which is for a um, tonight a two lot subdivision. Um, there's no development or infrastructure or whatnot being approved on this um, site. And so if uh, we do, you know, cut you short on your comments uh, or whatnot, please uh, don't take it, uh, you know, personally, you, there will be ample time for public comment um, as those um, you know, sort of plans evolve um, in other venues, which may even be this one. Um, but I will now, um, but, uh, okay, that's, that's that. Um, so does anyone have any changes to the minutes from the previous meeting? This would be the November 1st meeting. If not, I'll entertain a motion to approve those minutes. So moved. Motion by Joe. Second. Second by Catherine. Okay, Catherine, how do you vote? Approved, yes. Abby? Yes. Joe? Yes. Michael? Yes. And uh, I forget one person. Jean? You get it by the end of the night. Jean, how do you vote? I wasn't present. You were not present. All right. Who else was present? Just Jean. All right. And uh, Rob votes yes. Uh, so that is uh, approved unanimously for all those able to vote. Um, okay. So our next uh, item on the agenda is an application for 101 Northfield Street. Um, by uh, COPS Incorporated. Do we have a representative or a couple representatives for COPS here tonight? Okay. You're the only one, are you the only one in person, Phil? Okay, so then I'm gonna ask you to just sit at the table and that way, if you need to speak, you're at the round, if that's okay, or do you not anticipate speaking? No. Okay. <laughs> and I know John's here. I saw him as well, so. He is. Yes, um, I am here. This is John Spagsis from DeWolf Engineering, um, also uh, speaking for uh, COPS Inc. Uh, and I prepared the application materials that have been submitted. Okay. So COPS Inc. is the preferable uh, pronunciation? Yes. Okay. Um, perfect. Yep. So everybody that is planning on making public testimony this evening um, we are going to have to swear you in um, 
for tonight's meeting. And, and officially, we need to have Phil actually state who he is, even though we all know who he is. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Philip Ballinger, I'm an attorney at law in Montpelier, and I represent Cops Inc. Okay. Uh, and feel free to move the microphone as close to you as you need to, just so that the minute recording and everything can catch it. Okay. Um, do we need to write down the names of everybody, or you got? Um, <laughs> I think I've got everybody. Everybody's on here, um, and everybody here in the audience has signed the sheet. Everybody who wants to speak tonight, correct? Okay. And they'll say their names before they give their comments as well. Right. Okay. Um, so all those interested in providing testimony and application, would you please raise your right hand to be sworn in as a witness? And this is everybody at home as well. Um, you don't necessarily have to have your video on. We'll, we'll believe you, but please do try and follow along. All righty. Okay. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth under the pains and penalties of perjury? I do. All right, thank you, everybody. Okay. Uh, so at this point, I would like to turn uh, this um, item of the agenda, that 101 North Field Street application over to Meredith um, for a brief overview. Um, before we get started with the uh, testimony. Um, so I'm going to do a pretty brief procedural overview here um, because this is leave the leave the substance to the applicant. Um, so this is an application for final subdivision. Um, so subdivisions in Montpelier go through a two step process. First, they have a sketch plan review where there's no actual decision by the board. There's no permit issued. It's just a discussion and a chance for the applicant to get feedback. Um, the second stage is the final subdivision application, which is where we're at. Um, and at this stage, it's the every everything's on the record. We swear in the witnesses. And the once the board closes the public hearing, um, there will be a written decision by the board um, as to whether or not a permit will be issued by my office. Um, there's I, I want to um, I want to note um, so there's the staff report that got issued with the um, agenda and then um, actually can I have those pieces of paper I gave you because I think those are my copies um, in that staff report there was a notice that there were no comments we hadn't received comments yet back from the Department of Public Works um, and the, we actually got those comments after that all got posted um, and the Department of Public Works didn't have any um, actual issues with the application. Um, I can share that briefly. Sorry, I had a printout for it um, and I sent it around to the board members. Um, Apologies if I lost it. That's okay. <laughs> I'm sure it's there somewhere. Um, give me one second. Sorry about that. I'll just share it on the screen so the people at home can see it. Um, all right. Yep. Um, but I wanted to make sure this was in there. Um, so um, you know, here it is from Kurt Monica, who is the assistant director for public works. And he says, I took another look at the application and don't see any issues from DPW, so Department of Public Works perspective. I have no concerns with the proposed subdivision. Um, so I just wanted to make sure that that was in there and clear. Um, and I know that there are there's a couple of different people who are planning to read um, some testimony into the record. And we'll get that when we get there. Um, but I wanna make really clear that again this is a subdivision um the there is some discussion about potential development in a subdivision process but with a two lot subdivision you're really focusing on can the new lot be developed consistently with the regs it can it, it could be a minimal development um the subdivision application doesn't have to show 
that the lot can be developed to its maximum density potential. Um, that is something for the future development process um, and requires a lot more detail and information. Um, and that's why in this instance, that's being not not being discussed right now. This 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 isn't this isn't where we're at. If it were a situation where we had a multi lot subdivision proposed, which is sort of what our regs are geared towards, where somebody was proposing subdividing a parcel into you know 10 new housing lots, then we would definitely be looking a lot closer because you would definitely need you know various driveways you'd need to make sure they could space those all out you could needed to make sure that the road infrastructure was set up but we're just at a two lot subdivision so. Um, you know when we when we have more about future development that will most likely go through the development review board process again um, unless it's something small like you know two houses um, so i know people have a lot of concerns and i don't want you to think this is your only shot at that with potential development okay um all right that's long enough for me sorry thank you thank you Meredith. Um, so the next phase, I think, of how we're going to approach this is uh, we're going to let the applicant uh, provide a presentation on the application. Um, and um, after that, um, the board together will go through the, you know, some issues raised in the staff report. Um, they haven't all been addressed by the uh, applicant's presentation. Um, and since this has already been through sketch plan, I, you know, I think we can go through some of these uh, issues pretty quickly. Um, and we do want to leave as much time as possible for uh, public comment, given the uh, turnout that we have tonight and interest in this application. So uh, I will turn it over to whoever would like to go first representing COPS on the Northfield Street application. It's gonna, John's gonna make the presentation. Okay. Good evening, everybody. Um, so I think that I will try to be as brief as possible here. Uh, and as you know, it's a, to lot subdivision. I'm going to uh, share my screen um, and hopefully uh, get the right information up here. So um, this is the subdivision plat. Is are you sharing, seeing my screen here? Yes. Okay. So um, the this is a, a, a blow up the overall property. The Econo Lodge sits on what will be this lot, lot one, and the proposed subdivision line is here, and this is the lot two that is proposed to be subdivided, and this is the blow up of that. Um, <clears throat> and let's see. so there's the existing gravel area here, Derby Drive. Northfield Street, um, and we are now showing the sub. I mean, the the setback lines, which are five feet all the way around on the um, on a corner lot. Um, the frontage on the lot is two hundred and ninety two feet along Northfield Street and two hundred and twelve feet along uh, Derby Drive. Uh, <clears throat> there's existing access onto Derby Drive. And uh, you know that's basically the the sum of what the proposal is is to divide uh, the property at this line here, uh, and the, the proposed lot meets the requirements of the mixed use residential uh, standards. Uh, the required minimum is three thousand square feet. This is sixty thousand nine hundred square feet. Um, and the minimum frontage is 45 and it's 292 on one street and 212 on the other. Um, the only other things that I really would mention is uh, in, during sketch plan, there were uh, comments regarding parking and loading. Um, and the uh, parking for the existing hotel, there is adequate parking on the hotel parcel, and there will be no sharing of space across the um, proposed subdivision line, that all access 
for um, the hotel will be via their existing uh, accesses onto Northfield Street and any use of this parcel will be um, either via Derby Drive or via a, a drive which the, where they would propose and permit off of Northfield Street. And other than that, I really don't think that I need to speak much more uh, unless there are questions that the board or would want to ask. So I will stop sharing my screen and um, turn it over to Meredith. Uh, yeah, this is Rob here, the chair. Um, so I guess I did have one question while you had the plat up there, just while we're while we're at it. And I think we talked about a little bit of the sketch plan, but you show a uh, a gravel drive crossing the the boundary line, the proposed boundary line. So. Like, you know, right now, can you, is that, is, you know, gravel drive still there? Or is that? Yeah, the, the, are you talking here? Yes. Yes, this, um, the gravel is there um, now. So, but you're not proposing any access, like, between the two lots um, after the subdivision is complete. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. So any sort of pedestrian traffic or vehicular traffic, like you said, would go onto North Street, Northfield Street, or onto Derby Drive from a proposed development. Correct. Okay. Um, thank you very much for that. Um, so uh, I guess unless board members have any immediate questions, um, we can start going through the staff report here. Um, I think that the first part of this, um, you know, dimensional requirements uh, seem to be very well met um, for this subdivision. I think I see that one thing that jumped out with this type of thing is that you have a 25 foot clearance um, between uh, the existing hotel and the proposed line when I think the setback is only uh, five feet. So that doesn't seem to be, you know, much of an issue. And like you said, the um, proposed, uh, you know, lot area is very sufficient for the MUR dis district. Um, I think that the first uh, issue that was raised in the staff report, um, which was just, uh, I think, just a minor comment, um, was on the stormwater management, which is section 309 of the regs. Um, there weren't any specific, uh, you know, issues here, but I think the question I have is, um, do you, which direction is the water flowing generally on the site as it as is? Um, does it go to, you know, downhill? Well, I, I would hope that's the case. Uh, but, uh, you know, do, is it go towards the Econo Lodge or Derby Drive or Norfield Street? Just generally, what direction do you do, do, do things go? Um, you know, we have not done a topographic survey of the property. So um, I'm just speaking based on my. Uh, you know, knowledge of the site, and I'd say in general, um, the both the um, both of the parcels, poten potential both parcels, slope towards Northfield Street. Um, you know, in you know, I, if I can reshare my screen, um, try sharing this, and. What are the overall plan? So an ortho photo take a minute to load. Uh, is everybody seeing this now? Yes. So this is an ortho photo of the site, um, which was taken while it was a storage yard when Du Bois construction was doing some construction there. So you can see here's the existing hotel, um, the existing access drives to the hotel. Um, and this is the gravel area that's outlined shown, whereas this storage area has now been cleaned up and grassed over. 
So the, what you see on that subdivision plot as far as the edge of gravel is this gravel area back on the, the back of the site. But in general, as far as stormwater and directional flow, um, it's from this, uh, the back boundary towards Northfield Street uh, all the way along. This is a very steep slope, um, hence being undeveloped, but it all sloping towards Northfield Street. Um, this, th this developable portion of uh, proposed lot two is quite flat and gently uh, sloping. It might slope a little bit towards this driveway here, but in general, I think the site slopes towards Northfield Street. Okay. Um, so, let me see if I understand, you know, what you're saying. So you're saying that there's not necessarily much drainage, existing drainage infrastructure um, or drainage that goes between the two parcels, um, of, you know, to, to propose parcels um, because things tend, they tend to drain directly towards the street? I'd say in general that's um, correct. Okay. And it, it may be the case that some portions of this do flow over the property boundary here and maybe a little bit here flows that way, but I think in general, it flows towards Northfield Street. Okay. Thank you. I think that that's enough for uh, stormwater. Seems straightforward. Do board members have any question on the on stormwater? Okay. So the next section here uh, we're going to tackle is access and circulation. Um, oops, sorry. Um, and. Um, I think we want to highlight a key uh, key section here um, is that um, you know Northfield Street is a uh, class uh, one highway and um, Derby Drive is a uh, secondary street um, and section 3010B12 indicates um, that the preference is to have um, the access on a um, secondary street if it's a corner lot. Um, this is indeed a corner lot as it pre presented in the application. Um, but the board has the ability to, uh, you know, demonstrate that, you know, or advocate that a class one highway shall if it will improve traffic circulation and uh, in public safety. Um, so could that can sort of like maybe talk about like sort of the different options between, you know, having accessing the parcel on Derby Drive versus accessing the, accessing the parcel onto North, Northfield Street. I'm sorry, but was that a question for me? This is John Spagus. Well, I did, that's for, for either of you, John. Yeah. Um, so um, as, you know, things, you know, progress and uh, this as a, as a subdivision, um, do you um, see any benefit, um, you know, from a traffic circulation and public stand safety standpoint to prefer to go onto Derby Drive um, or onto uh, Northfield Street? This is Phil Zellinger. I, I'm not sure the applicant can make that kind of a conjectural assessment. It, <clears throat> the act of a subdivision is to create a new permitted lot mm -hmm. and because a lot cannot be created in the city unless it meets the nuts and bolts of the zoning ordinance mm -hmm. <clears throat> this lot if it's permitted will have an access to derby drive mm -hmm. and an access to northfield street mm -hmm. because those are pre-existing mm -hmm. the applicant is not going to take any steps to create either of those access or um, curb cuts, for lack of a better phrase. Um, the applicant doesn't, doesn't pretend to project what may happen on parcel two, mm -hmm. because it may not be through the applicant's action that mm -hmm. any permit is sought. When that is done, it will be a major site plan review, I believe, mm -hmm. 
And at that time, I think is the most appropriate. The issue is ripe for consideration because circulation and access are almost academic if there's no nothing happening on the site. Yes. Um, well, I guess one question to clarify. So you said there is an existing access on Northfield Street and on Derby on, on Derby Drive. Are you referring to potential access, but not not necessarily as a permitted access? I'm sorry. Are Mr. you referring Chair, to perma didn't... permitted ac existing access points, um, or are you referring to um, existing access points? So they're I, not. I think they're existing. Oh. Yes. Yeah, Meredith. I'm oh. sorry. <laughs> So, um, John, can you just bring up the the draft final the draft plat? Because I think we've got. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I know I sh shouldn't always interfere, but right now we've the new parcel. My understanding is has one curb cut on it. The other curb cuts are all going to be on lot one. The Northfield Street curb cuts are all on lot one, where the Econo Lodge is going to stay. And the only existing curb cut for lot two is off of Derby Drive, is my understanding based on this plat. But the way I saw this in my staff report, and it could be wrong, and the way that, because the Department of Public Works looks at access availability, and the way I was looking at this was lot two, because we don't know what's going to have going to happen, needs to have the ability to have accesses on either street that gives future application and the board leeway to decide where that access point actually goes when we have a future development application before it. Um, you know, if if we've had another other applications before the board where there is only one location where a curb cut could potentially go that would meet sight line requirements, all of that, where it was on a curve next to a river, in that instance for subdivision approval, we insisted that they show us they could actually build a curb cut point there in that location that met the VTRAN standard. Department of Public Works does not have that concern here. They feel like if need be, you could have a curb cut on the Northfield Street frontage of lot two or do something with the curb cut that's already on Derby Drive to fit multiple future potential development possibilities so you know i think that's that's where we're that's where i see this going is is the lot could the lot have additional or different access points to meet those future development possibilities or not yes okay okay um so i guess like meredith said public of Department of Public Works, at least as far as the subdivision um, is concerned, because that's what they were reviewing, um, you know, did have no issues with the, um, you know, location of the curb cuts and access and circulation, no issues with the application at all from their perspective. Um, so, I can jump on down to hit the major points here. Um, so jumping to thirty five oh four, like I think the access and circulation, it's a very limited, you know, review here um, in that um, you have to demonstrate that the proposed subdivision will not unduly have an undue adverse impact on the traffic in the area, um, including the traffic is generated by the proposed subdivision, um, not unreasonably and disproportionately to contribute to the reduced level of service uh, of affected streets in intersections and for all modes of travel and reasonable measures have been taken to minimize and mitigate the amount of vehicular traffic uh, generated by the proposed subdivision. Um, and so this is a, you know, a two lot subdivision. Um, and um, so the applicant, I'm guessing, did not conduct a traffic search you know, study 
um, for a good reason. Um, and what is that reason? The, the reason is that the, there is no traffic contemplated from parcel two as a subdivided lot. And so say that you were going to, uh, you know, <clears throat> turn uh, parcel two into, uh, or this was a 10 lot subdivision. And under that case, a traffic study might be something that would be considered. Is that correct? It would be necessary. Okay, thank you. Board members, if you have any questions, please speak up if you would like to. So it's Abby. Um, I do have a question. I'm wondering if there's a proposal now to permit the drive onto the access onto Northfield Street, or is that something that that would that the applicant intends to to wait on until there's a um, future you know pending proposal for development on that site? The, the subdivision application does not is not seeking approval for a, an access on Northfield Street. Okay, thank you. Yes, Marta. Um, So I'm really sorry. I just spotted an error in my own staff report about the, and I know that this doesn't, it doesn't really matter because there's no traffic proposed by this, but um, I accidentally put in an old standard here for that 3504 traffic. Um, just for the record, it actually is supposed to read like the section 3303 standard for um, conditional use review. And just for the record, I want to read that in, um, especially because Rob did read it out, um, that the standard is that the applicant shall demonstrate that the proposed development will not have an undue adverse effect upon the traffic in the area, including that the volume, type, and timing of traffic generated by the proposed development shall not be substantially greater than what would normally occur at nearby uses or at other uses permitted in the neighborhood. And then two, that reasonable measures have been taken to minimize or mitigate the amount of vehicular traffic generated by the proposed development, or in this case, subdivision. Um, I'm sorry, that was some old language from a recent change. Um, okay, so that brings us to a next, uh, Area. So section 3505 is the design and configuration of the parcel boundaries. Um, and so I think that in your presentation, you clearly show a line going perpendicular to the street. Um, and I think to meet the um, effectively shown that the dimensional requirements are, you know, are met here. Um, I think that there's maybe one question to um, maybe expand upon here. Um, and that um, there is a requirement um, to consider um, the future subdivision of the two of the two parcels. Um, and so I think this question is is that um, if you were to further subdivide lot one, um, would there be um, a potential for access to further subdivide that lot, given the current conditions? Is there a, and that is a question for either uh, John or um, whoever. So I'll feel that, um, so this uh, on lot one has over a thousand feet of, will have over a thousand feet of frontage on Northfield Street. Uh, so if there were to be some desire to um, further subdivide, um, there, there could potentially be more parcels with uh, frontage onto Northfield Street. So um, this parcel does not become landlocked in any way. Um, it's just a matter of how developable the, the slopes on the property are. very much. Um, so I think the next, I think, section to hit upon here is design layout of necessary improvements. 
and um, Public Works had no comment on this, but if you could just maybe talk a little bit about the access to uh, city infrastructure like water and sewer and where is that located, you know? Sure. So um, the, the existing hotel as well as um, lot two, um, well, the existing hotel has uh, municipal connections by sewer and water to um, existing city services in Northfield Street. Um, lot two was formerly the site of the um, Brown Derby restaurant, um, and that had uh, um, sewer and water connections to uh, Northfield Street, the city services. There's, you know, um, there are major sewer and water lines in uh, in Northfield Street, and 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 they're actually uh, existing stubs for those services to this property. Um, so it's very easily um, serviced by the uh, municipal services. And then being on Northfield City, I would assume that the electrical and communications and all that type of stuff is, uh, is readily available. Correct, correct. The, the um, Power and communication lines run right up and down Northfield Street and um, easy access to the site. They have fiber optic on Northfield Street yet? You know? Yeah. I I do not know, uh, but I would. I heard a yes from in the room. You might not be able to hear it. So thank you. <laughs> um, so do we, do we have any comments from the fire chief? Um, no, we didn't. I, I think that if there was anything yep. pressing, Bob would have spoken up. Okay. I think he's probably been dealing with some other things, but no, we didn't have any comments. I mean, there's there's fire hydrants along here. There's you know anything anything big that's put in on lot two is would need to um, meet fire code and um, you know depending on the situation that might include sprinklers. Uh, but there's you know major major water lines right there along Northfield Street. So that wouldn't be an issue. Yes, Bill. If I'm not mistaken, when Northfield Street was rebuilt several years ago, yep. it also involved major upgrades to the water lines. So I think they're eight inch water lines now so yep. that they're adequate power and pressure yeah. to, to jet to one. Um, yep. And that's, that's one of those reasons why Department of Public Works really doesn't have any concerns with this subdivision because absolutely. Northfield Street, when it was upgraded, yep. all those water lines, the sewer lines were all upgraded immensely so the, the, Thanks, Bill. It's, the, it's 21st century service okay. um so would you so at landscaping and screening i think for for subdivisions you know the way that we've sort of typically done that um you know done this under the new regu uh, regulations is uh sort of ask the applicant if they've been willing to have a condition on this permit that uh that plan be um, you know submitted um, in conjunction with the you know future development um, would type set type of condition to meet the landscaping and screening you know standards under the subdivision requirements um, be okay for you to do during a you know a site plan review or any type of you know development on this parcel well i i would like to ask what what the substantive differences are between 3203 and 3506. 32. Yes, Meredith. So one reason we've been doing this, Phil, is because sometimes when people come for these two lot subdivisions, they then just want to put one or two dwelling units on a parcel, and then the site plan standards and general landscaping standards wouldn't apply. So the only hook we would have is these subdivision standards. Um, I know that's not necessarily the case here. Um, there's really... The, the site plan landscaping requirements are much more stringent and have a lot more specifics in them than um, the, the subdivision 3506, um, which, yeah, 3506. So, you know, a future development that's subject to the, the other landscaping requirements is going to have to meet a whole lot more. So it, it's not going to be a big burden on a future applicant. Um, well, but isn't it duplicative to have 3203 apply as well as 3506? 
but there's no guarantee that whatever somebody proposes on that parcel is going to necessarily trigger 3203. 3203. Um, it's not having a future, if somebody's already triggered 3203, having to also make sure they meet mm -hmm. this one is not going to be a big deal. They would already meet that anyway. <clears throat> would the DRB consider a condition that said, in the event a project is applied for that does not trigger 3203 review, then any applicant would be required to meet the strictures of 3506. I, That's your belt and suspenders. Yeah, I think that works. I think that because I think yeah. we're, this is all of these standards in here about green stormwater infrastructure, vegetated buffers, buffers along waterways, enhance appearance of street frontages, and then maintain privacy. That's all in 3203. I think that makes a lot of sense. Okay. Thank you. Phil. So 3506 will be applicable only if 3203 is not. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Yes. Okay. Makes sense. Um, Um, so, uh, I guess the character of the neighborhood, um, is the next, uh, section, which is 3507. Um, I think that we can, uh, maybe take a pause, you know, pause on really going into too much depth here, um, and maybe expand onto some, uh, some of the public comments that we have. Um, but, um, you know, as stated before by the applicant, this is in the mixed use residential, uh, you know, district. Um, and, you know, certainly the subdivision that is proposed, uh, you know, appears to very clearly sort of meet the character of the neighborhood as a subdivision um, standard when it comes to lot size and you know, configuration in, in, in that matter. Um, you know, what we don't know is uh, what would be proposed on this, which is the, for the date of a different uh, hearing. Um, so I don't see um, a need necessarily to go into too much uh, depth um, the staff concluded that uh, this you know complies with the you know character of a neighborhood you know standards um, as the subdivision was uh, approved um, and um, I think that's all I have for the staff report Meredith did I miss anything just one item that I so um, I, I, I don't think it actually is is going to matter, but for the record, um, so that we can actually get a tally of exactly how many parking oh, yes. spaces the hotel actually requires, is there a, a total square footage known of the public assembly space? So the public assembly space isn't like large meeting rooms, it's more the, like the, um, you know the entry area or the um front desk fr the front desk area or a general like the the dining if there's a dining space or uh office business office space that that guests can use Love do we have a square footage of that i only have one experience of having visited the front front desk and mm -hmm. met someone there met the applicant there mm -hmm. um and it certainly wasn't 7200 square feet <laughs> And okay. there was, I believe there was a coffee machine in the corner. Okay. Um, John, have you been there more recently? Um, yes, and that's all, also uh, my experience. I, I would guess it's in the 100 to 200 square foot um, zone, but I have not measured it. Um, but it's, I agree with you that it's definitely not 7,200 square feet. Okay. That's, I think that's all we needed this confirmation okay. that there, cause, cause as long as it's not, not more than 7,200 square feet, it, then you can have the parking that is there. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. Um, I guess, so, so I, I guess one last issue for clarification here, and I think, this is sort of like an either or maybe a inconsistency that you know exists on the on the plat here and that so we show 
Can you, can you, uh, can you pull up the plot again, uh, John? All right. So you show on the plot just north of the proposed boundary that would be the southerly entrance to the O'Connell Lodge, um, a driveway that goes in and goes up the proposed boundary line uh, and then crosses, um, you know, and then goes into that you know gravel area that's shown on the interior parcel of lot two. So I look at this and I see that like you, you know, it's, you could possibly you know drive a vehicle or or walk up this driveway and on to on onto the parcel. So I guess my question is is will that be blockade blockaded off and there'll be no access between the two parcels here, or will there be uh, you know permitted access in some way um, allowed to continue along that you know connected um, gravel drive or paved drive whatever 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 it is because that just seems like it has to be either one way or the other based on you know the plot if I were to you know go by this property or somebody like that you might see like oh I can you know go across that line and go on to North Northfield Street without you know further 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 information um, you understand sort of the either or here that's quite neighborly. <laughs> Most of the time, neighbors don't just avail themselves to the use of their neighbor's driveway or front yard or what have you. Um, I, and I say that honestly. Um, yes. Any aspect of ingress and egress on parcel two will be an element of major site plan review when an application is submitted. And so <clears throat> I, I can represent to you the status of this contract between the applicant and a prospective purchaser does not include at this time any <clears throat> common access or use rights of use between the two parcels. Mm -hmm. but. That's just representation of what exists now. I can tell you it was not bargained for. This is a lot like Monopoly. You can't build the hotel until you have three houses and you don't sell rights unless they're spelled out in the contract. Mm -hmm. And so there, to my knowledge, and I was involved in the drafting of the contract, there is no exchange of property rights between parcels one and parcel two okay. at this time. Okay. If, and that's just a representation as to what exists now. I can't, mm -hmm. I, I'm not, sh we haven't gone to a closing yet, but mm -hmm. <clears throat> that's number one. Number two, any element that would involve such a, con a use on parcel one or parcel two would be an element of major site plan review. Mm -hmm. And now there may be, in the future, there may be stormwater issues or water and sewer issues or accesses and technical um, engineering issues that might arise in which one property owner may, alleviates the, the difficulty the adjoining property owner has. I, I can't say that won't happen, but there's no element of parcel one that there's, there's no element by which parcel one wants to provide anything more to parcel two than it has to. That's a, I think that's, that, that, that's a clear answer. I, um, yeah, I think if that's, if that's the current, current situation that I'm good, I'm good with that. Uh, any other questions from the board before we uh, start with the public uh, comment? Okay. I don't uh, have any questions. I'm, I'm just eager to hear the public's comments at this time. Okay. Um, I think that I would entertain a five minute recess prior to entering this phase just so that we can do it in the orderly uh, fashion. Um, that is, makes sense. If the board member is not would the board members like to continue going or would a five minute recess uh, be something you'd like? I'm sorry, Dean, you're gonna have to speak up. Fine, five minutes.
Five minute recess is fine. Okay. Uh, so we will reconvene here at 8.05. Um, and um, meantime, everyone just hang, hang tight. Um, there's rest. Meredith? Repeat? Yeah, can I make a comment? Um, let's, let's, can we wait till we reconvene? No, it's about, it's about the, um, your description, you know, the message you sent out to us with the big red stop sign for the abutters. Okay. I just want to say that it's really hard to see the, the link to this Zoom meeting. It's a red background. Okay. And blue text. If it could be, the link could be put down in the white area and maybe bigger. Okay. I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll work on adjusting that. Thank you for that critique. Okay. That's all. Okay. Thanks, Pete. Back to order is 8.05, um, and um, we are going to uh, hear some comments from the public of folks that are here in the room. Um, so the first person we'd like to recognize is speaking. Hold, hold on, maybe just let, them, let everybody know that we're, we're not ignoring Zoom, that we're going to start with people here in the room. 
and yep. then we'll get to them. This is not. So the order here is we're going to um, do the folks in the room first. Um, we have a couple people that are representing um, a group here um, to make things more efficient, um, and then we'll be sure to get to everyone on the, the Zoom platform after we uh, do everything in the room here. Um, so I'd like to recognize Emma Zavez here um, to speak on the and application. So instead of there, if you could go to the stand up microphone um, and yeah. Phil, you can still sit at the table if you need to in case we have other questions for you, however you want to do it. Um, and so if you could make sure to state your name really clearly for the record and your address um, and then go into your. Sounds good. Let me know if you can't hear me. Well. And you you've got that one on. Awesome. Um, so good, good evening. Uh, my name is Emma Zavez. I live at 3 Derby Drive, a property which abuts the proposed lot number two. I'm also the primary contact for the Derby Drive, Meadow Lane, Abbey Road, and Mountain View Street neighborhood residents who submitted a letter requesting interested party status. We live in the Northfield Street neighborhood a residential 9,000 district that surrounds the proposed lot number two on three of its four sides. As the primary contact, I will provide a summary of our key concerns as well as recommendations. However, I wanna note that many of my neighbors are here tonight and I fully support their right to speak to their own personal concerns as well. I want to emphasize that our concerns and recommendations are specific to the subdivision application. According to section 3505 of the Montpelier zoning regulations, a subdivision application should be designed in such a way as to present quote, foreseeable difficulties in future development of the parcel. The DRB has the authority to attach conditions to a subdivision plan that it deems necessary for approval. We submit that the application as written would create foreseeable difficulties in the following three areas and we call on the DRB to take steps to address these issues at this early stage in the process, rather than wait until they become more serious or contentious. The first issue is the character of the neighborhood. As written, the subdivision application is not in keeping with the established development pattern of the neighborhood. The Northfield Street North neighborhood to which the application refers is not a true neighborhood, but rather a steeply, a steeply sloped and heavily wooded area running along lower Northfield Street, in which a scattering of buildings have been constructed at various points over the past 150 years. Although this stretch of Northfield Street has been designated as a mixed use district, in fact, with the exception of the much more recently constructed Econo Lodge Motel, all of the buildings are residences. Furthermore, lot number two would be surrounded on three of its four sides by the residential 9000 district, and the proposed access point to that lot would be located well within our small neighborhood, which was established as a planned residential community in the early 1950s. Our recommendation is that the DRB should require that approval of the subdivision be subject to the condition that any application for a development or zoning permit on lot number two must ensure that the lot will be developed in a manner in keeping with the character of the neighborhood which physically surrounds it, the residential 9000 district. This includes proper access management and landscaping so that it does not alter the character of our neighborhood. The second issue is traffic. As written, the subdivision application would create foreseeable difficulties with traffic congestion and pedestrian safety by making Derby Drive the primary entry egress for a possible sizable future development like the one presented to the Design Review Committee by Rick Vogue this past spring. Derby Drive is a small residential road that already experiences a high volume of traffic due to the presence of national life and because it is used as a GPS enabled shortcut to and from exit eight of Interstate 89. The Derby Drive access point identified in the subdivision application is so close to the stop sign at Northfield Street intersection that it almost it would is almost certain to lead to the vehicle to vehicle gridlock on both Derby Drive and Northfield Street during peak hours. Our recommendation is that in order to determine whether or not the subdivision will be free of foreseeable difficulties in providing access to buildings, the DRB should require prior to approval of this final subdivision application that a thorough traffic study be conducted to ascertain the impact of the potential for a significant number of cars entering and exiting the parking lot. 
Our third issue is noise and light pollution. As written, the subdivision application would likely create foreseeable difficulties with noise and light pollution entering the residential neighborhood from the parking lot of a future development. This is a particular concern for immediate abutters on Meadow Lane and Derby Drive. Our recommendation is that the DRB should condition the approval of a subdivision on a requirement that any application for a development or zoning permit on the new lot number two would include a professionally designed landscaping and screening plan and that effectively addresses concerns about light pollution and noise, as well as the visual impact of a large development. And in the handout, which I have copies of, I think Meredith probably distributed to board members, there is a screenshot of the zoning district map indicating um, where the parcel is located in the middle of the residential 9000 district. On behalf of my neighbors, thank you very much. Thank you, Emma. Next uh, public comment we'd like is, uh, is Peter Kelvin here in person? Yeah, I would like to defer until a little later, please. Okay. okay. Um, is anyone else here present in the room that would like to issue public comment? Yes, anybody. Anybody in the room who would like to, if you would like to, you can come up to the mic, stand up microphone. Just introduce yourself and uh, go right ahead. Hi, I'm Dan Jones. I uh, live at 116 Northfield Street. I'm the closest to butter, if you will, um, across the street. Uh, so anything done there, I will be looking at over my morning coffee. Um, it is interesting to note about the whole thing about the character of the neighborhood that actually up until the, there was quite a stink made of it we had a rotting hulk of the uh, brown derby bear for a number of years that uh, neither helped the neighborhood um, you know created vermin etc we have the motel which is a hardly sightly if you will up the hill on the other side, across the street, there is um, a couple of large apartment houses uh, with eight or nine units in it. So the idea that this is a single family residential neighborhood um, is a bit of a scam. Uh, the, the area is actually mixed use and very clearly mixed use and probably should be considered as such. Um, I say this because I believe that we have to start looking at a, a broader use of our properties in town rather than trying to maintain the idea of uh, Mayberry uh, single family uh, home neighborhoods. Uh, we're a central uh, Vermont city and we have to start uh, treating as such. And that particular lot actually could allow itself to be developed in a way that would add to the absolute housing need in the city. We have a crisis and we have to do it. As far as the traffic, an extra 20 cars at any point is de minimis because we have regular uh, traffic flow down Northfield Street from Northfield at the rush hours that can be uh, go on for quite a while. We have the traffic flow from National Life going on. So uh, it is a bit of a red herring to talk about the traffic flow. I think we have a... Um, an area that is uh, already highly trafficked, uh, you know, as far as uh, that goes, I would like to uh, say, you know, anything that goes in there, we're not talking about a uh, parking garage, thank he heavens, and uh, we would like to uh, see, you know, from my point of view, I'd like to see the uh, design review board, uh, development review board, take into consideration in this the allowance of the broadest possible for future uses of this uh, property. Thank you very much. Just uh, introduce yourself and go right ahead. Hi, my name's Stephen Cook, 34 Mountain View Street. And um, I have lived in the uh, on Mountain View Street for about 18 years now. And the property at 101 Northfield Street has been the topic of conversation for nearly the entire time I've lived there. <laughs> I've spoken in front of this committee, as well as city council, as well as work with the mayor, as well as work with the city manager. 
uh, on the former Brown Derby property, which took 10 years to have taken down. It was a blight on the neighborhood. Needless to say, a lot of us who lived through that time frame are a bit concerned. Um, I know we're not talking about the development, but we've all seen photos. We've read the articles. So we're concerned. Um, you know, there's a, a number of issues at play here, a lot, some of which have already been mentioned, but another one, but I, I am also concerned about traffic related issues. The National Life Campus is located in that area, which brings in a couple thousand employees every weekday under normal circumstances. And uh, the exit from Derby onto uh, Northfield Street can get really backed up uh, at times. So making that exit onto Derby Drive is going to be a challenge for all of us who live in that area if that is the location of where that, that entrance and exit is going to be located. Um, and traffic along Northfield Street is also uh, pretty bad at times, backing up all the way to the Econo Lodge or further, again, under normal circumstances. So, you know, we have a number of concerns. Those are my concerns. Um, and I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else uh, here in person like to go before we go to the uh, remote? Yeah. Um, Come forward. Uh, Just I'm Martin from I'm at 11 Meadow Lane. I'm sorry. Can you spell your last name? B R O M I R S K I. Thank you. Um, can we put the visual back up, the map of the lot? I just want some uh, clarification on. So the the um, the plat. Either one, yeah. either the either um, the satellite image or the plat. Yeah. John, could you share the um, plat just because you have it up right away? Nope. Work. Okay. I'm working on it. <laughs> okay. Yep. No. Thank you. If for some reason it's not working, I can do it. I just have to. Or the yeah. Or the satellite. Yeah. How's that? Um, is that adequate? Yes. Um, so I'm basically just recently getting that that lot, lot one, and also lot two, lot two and lot one. We're talking about we're talking about a neighborhood, but the definition of neighborhood is pretty loose. There's the technical definition, and then there's you know what we think of as a neighborhood. So I just learned that lot one and lot two are a neighborhood, the Northfield Street North neighborhood. Right, that goes all the way down that to goes all the way down. Yep. But this is sort of like a peninsula. And in fact, what we're seeing here on every side is a different neighborhood. It's the Northfield Street neighborhood, mm -hmm. which is a which like Emma said is a residential nine thousand neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's its own internal it's like it's not really in a neighborhood. It's um, yeah, I just, want, I just needed a visual aid that so, we're surrounded by, that that neighborhood is surrounded by, in fact, a whole other neighborhood, that lot. That lot is its own well, neighborhood. Um, can, can I address this, yes, Rob? Please. Okay. Um, so, John, can you stop sharing your screen? Ooh, we have some echoing. Crazy Should I sit down? Um, did I put this in the staff report like I meant to? Give me one second. Okay. So let me pull up the staff report so people at home can see this as well. Give me a second. I don't have the whole packet open. Um, so in January of 2018, a whole new set of zoning regulations were adopted. Okay, and this was a multi year process. And part of that was redrawing where zoning districts were in Montpelier. Now this happened before I took my job, but I've I've, I've heard lots of discussion about it. Um, and new lines were drawn for a lot of districts um, so that we would actually have neighborhoods um, and zoning districts where the parcels actually complied with the standards of those districts. And 
tried to group similar types of development and properties together. So in some of those instances, the neighborhoods are nice blocks, right? Um, but in some of them, they're kind of odd shapes. I'm just trying to get to the right page here. Um, and this is one of those zoning district neighborhoods where it's an odd shape. Um, and that is in part because you do have the hotel there, right? Um, and that particular use would not be allowed at all in right. the surrounding residential neighborhood, no, I get right? It. Yeah. And so this goes down and these other parcels were brought into this particular neighborhood because, because these are different kinds of housing compared to some of these little lots where it's single family, right? And these are also closer to the, you know, some people call it like the gas station alley, but where you've got the gas stations and other commercial development, it really isn't like a lot of these other parcels. The parcel sizes are a lot different. And these buildings, because of where they're located, are a little more um, apt to be able to be some of those non-residential right. uses that are allowed in mixed use, right? I mean, I know at some point there was a um, uh, like a hair salon down in one of those buildings um, down near River Street. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's so it wasn't just drawn willy nilly, um, but it is one of those ones where there's a strange little peninsula be in part because this parcel is so long. Yes, right. So I just want to make it clear that. Anything that's built on lot two, any structure, big or small, if you walk out the front door of your of your structure and you step off your property, you're mm -hmm. in a residential 9,000 neighborhood. Yep. If you go out your side door and step off your property, you're in a residential 9,000 neighborhood. Mm -hmm. and if you go out the back door and step off your property, you're in a residential 9,000 neighborhood. Yep. And, and that's you step one off reason... the property out of any of those three doors, you're in a residential 9,000 mm -hmm. neighborhood. No, and that's one reason I pointed that out in the staff report Thank is you. to make sure the board was aware of that, that it is, and that why this picture is in the staff report to show the board that, you know, there's, there's, there are two neighborhoods at play here. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for You're your welcome. comment. Oh. Okay. okay. Anyone else here in person that would, yes, please come up. My name is Jennifer Roberts. I live at 12 Mountain View Street. And I bought my house earlier this year. And when I was looking at the house, I considered the fact that I would have to deal with national life traffic. At my house, which is at the corner of Derby Drive and Mountain View Street, traffic is particularly prob problematic because when I back out of my driveway, I have traffic coming from three different directions potentially so i'm definitely very concerned about additional traffic that. Uh, development on these lots uh, might cause and completely support the idea of doing a traffic study, um, but, as I said, I, I considered the traffic and I bought the house anyway, because I love the house and I especially love the neighborhood it's a lovely small very connected neighborhood so i'm also very concerned with. Uh, one of the other points that Emma made uh, in her great presentation of what any kind of large scale development would do to the character of our neighborhood. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yes, please come forward. Hello, my name is Deborah Archer and I live at 6 Derby Drive. Um, my property is diagonal to the proposed subdivision lot. Um, and I would just ask members of the board to consider that um, the uh, application for subdivision is not a standalone process. I can't imagine the current owners are going to subdivide the property to keep it as it is now. So as we as a town start considering how to address a shortage of housing um, in our town and start looking towards um, infill as a way to uh, address those those concerns for a lack of housing in our town 
um, I just ask that the members of the board consider uh, any concerns that they might have if a subdivision would to occur um, near their home, how they would, what concerns they would have, how they would apply those concerns. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comment. Anyone else here in person? Okay, at this point we'll go to anyone, um, the you folks. Can use that screen to keep track of who's in order or my screen, either one. I just, okay, so uh, I think Billy Pearl would be next. So I'm just gonna start from the top on my screen and move down, okay. is that okay? Well, so we'll now recognize Billy Perrault um, to um, issue any comment you may have. So Billy, if you can, can you unmute yourself and just let us know if you have any comments? Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay, and if you could uh, let us know, remind me what your address is and then present your comments. I live at 35 Colonial Drive with my wife, Kathleen. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you, Billy. <clears throat> I've always had a very negative attitude towards the ownership of the Econo Lodge because they have been slumlords to the extreme. Billy? And for Billy. the last 20 years, they have denigrated mm -hmm. our neighborhood. That's all I want to say. Thank you for your comment. Uh, okay, so Joe Moore would be next. Joe Moore, would you like to speak? Yes, thank you. Uh, my name is Joseph Moore. I live at Reed Derby Drive. Um, first, I just want to thank the review board um, for, for allowing us the opportunity to speak. Um, I know it's, it's getting late on a, on a Monday evening. Um, so, like I said, my name is Joe Moore. My partner, Emma, and I live at Free Derby Drive, uh, which is the parcel at the corner of Derby and Meadow Lane, uh, immediately abutting the proposed lot number two from, from the rear. Um, first, I just want to quickly echo the concerns of my neighbors regarding foreseeable difficulties with traffic, traffic volume, uh, pedestrian safety, noise and light pollution, and potential alterations to the character of our neighborhood resulting from a large development on the proposed lot. Um, and I urge the review board to carefully consider our collective recommendations for addressing those issues. Uh, additionally, I wanna bring to your attention a particular concern that Emma and I have with the lot two boundary lines as drawn in the subdivision application. So the subdivision plat um, included with the application that you saw earlier indicates that our driveway encroaches the lot number two boundary on the rear side near Derby Drive. <clears throat> so if you look at the map, um, you'll see it has a little outline of, of our driveway with an arrow labeled driveway encroachment pointing to it. Um, and I just wanna say that, you know, we, we do not believe that our driveway passes over the property line. Uh, the edge of the driveway is several feet from the tree line that divides the properties. Uh, and further, if you look closely at the satellite image on the preceding page, it's clear from DeWolf's own rendering that there's at least several feet of space between the edge of our driveway and the applicant's placement of the property line. So we just wanna encourage you to um, verify the accuracy of the applicant survey prior to approval of the subdivision. You can understand why we would be a little bit uncomfortable with the DRB signing off on an application that indicates that our driveway is not entirely on our property. Um, and then finally, I just wanna say, <clears throat> speaking for myself, I am very much in favor of socially responsible housing development. I think we have a housing crisis and we should be doing everything in our power to ensure that Vermonters have access to truly affordable, safe and sanitary housing. <clears throat> uh, speaking for myself as an abutter and for many of my neighbors, so I know personally, um, we're not asking you to limit use of this parcel to single family home. Uh, that, that's a, a straw man ar argument. No one is suggesting that. Uh, what we're asking you to do is consider um, how a potential sizable development would impact um, our neighborhood and take uh, steps to make sure that any future housing is responsibly integrated into the surrounding community and considers um, the safety of, of residents and, and particularly our, our traffic concerns. 
Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your comment. Next. Uh, I almost have to deal with that does I guess at this time does the applicant have any uh, any comments or anything that they would like to share given the current public comments thus far I think the foreseeable difficulties the words of art that are used in the zoning ordinance deal with foreseeable difficulties that the rational man could identify with a specific development or project. It's very difficult, pun intended, for the Institute of Traffic Engineers to perform a traffic study for a project that has not yet been defined. It's also very difficult to design to provide a landscape design that prevents noise and light pollution for a project that itself has not yet been designed. And likewise, the character of the area, you cannot project. If you don't have a plan in mind, a specific project, it's virtually impossible to assess what impact the undefined project has on the character of the area. Uh, I, I recognize the issue we have here, and I'm sympathetic to the neighbors and to the plight they find themselves in, but <clears throat> the zoning ordinance contemplates that this is not, this is a legal fiction. And the, the zoning ordinance contemplates the ability of a landowner to subdivide the parcel without asking for review of a project on a lot. And that's what we have here. I think the neighbors should understand that major site plan review will enable all of them to address these issues when there's a concrete project that's presented. And that's, that's all I'll say about foreseeable difficulties. As to the location of the driveway, yes, uh, that's a matter, that's not a matter that's justiciable by the, the De Development Review Board. It's, it's a private property matter. And the way for that neighbor to discuss it is to be in contact with the, um, the surveyor, perform the survey. And, and I will take issue with the neighbors saying that there's a tree line that defines the, the property boundary. Well, property boundaries exist with or without the tree line. And you, one draws an implication or inf an inference from the location of a tree line. Yeah. Um, so uh, yeah. it's very easy to contact the surveyor and uh, work with them on site to determine and ascertain how they set their pins. It's really not a matter for the DRB. So Meredith, did you have any additional no. comment on that? No, no. I think that's helpful. No. Um, all right, so I think we need to go back. Um, just in case she has something like she has to log off or something. I have a Megan. Uh, uh, Can I just clarify that the application contains both a sketch or the, the site plan with the boundary line and then contains the satellite image yep. where they've drawn the boundary line and those two are in conflict in the applicant's application. So the um the so plat is the is out. the thing that's required by the subdivision and that's what's going to get recorded and signed as as approved. Um, okay, so the satellite, you know, the satellite image with really, boundary lines is not accurate. Right. That's no. a, it's a that's sort of a uh, overarching just guidance give everybody the big picture sort of. The thing that will be governing the subdivision is the plat that has all those survey notes on it. Okay. Um and so yeah, it's that's, okay that's, for them to be in conflict. The yes. lot lines okay. on <laughs> the lot lines on the on the um, Google Earth photo yeah. are imprecise. Yes, I mean they're from outer space. Yeah. Um. Uh, can you hold on one second? Just because we have somebody on yeah. Zoom that has their hand up, and I want to make sure we get to them before they if they have no, to get I, off I'm just going to ask a question about the. Did you say who the surveyor is? 
Yeah, I mean, it's on, it's the, on the plat. It's on the plat. The surveyor is DeWolf Engineering Associates. Uh, sorry, sorry. Nope, nope. Sorry, sorry. That's the, that's, it was plan prepared for. It's True Line Land Surveyors Incorporated. And this will be in the recording. Uh, for, the plot date is July 28th, 2021. And this document is down in our office. And it's also posted on the website. So you can zoom in on this. Um, but it's True Line Land Surveyors Incorporated. They're out of St. Johnsbury. Um, and anybody who wants to get their full contact information, they can email me and I can send it to them if they need it. It's also all out on there. Um, so Megan Powell, I think, had, had her hand raised. I just want to make sure in case you had to log off that, um, Rob, is, is that good to have yes. Megan talk? Okay. Megan, please go ahead. Hi, thanks. Yeah, thanks for being here, everybody. I really appreciate the conversation. Um, I would like to thank and, and echo my neighbor's concerns. Um, I live at 66 Abbey Road, so we are not direct abutters, but we're directly around the corner and drive every single day um, by the proposed subdivision lot. Um, and we too have lived here for um, almost 11 years and the, the site previously was um, very difficult to um, get action on as it was an eyesore and there were rodents and pests and um, people there all the time, criminal activity and so on. So um, I also just echo what my neighbors had said about how um, concerned some of us feel about the idea of moving right into another development that feels like, um, even though this hearing is, is about subdivision, I think we've all, or many of us have seen the, the proposed project. Um, so to suggest that this is, um, while procedurally this is merely a hearing about the subdivision, I think to suggest that there's no idea what could possibly be planned there is um, simply disingenuous. And so um, with that said, understanding that no project has been approved because no, it couldn't be the case since there's been no subdivision yet, um, still understanding that there are substantial concerns, even among people who fully support affordable housing um, at a multi-family level, um, there are a lot of concerns regarding the foreseeable difficulties for traffic, light, noise, and the character of the neighborhood. Specifically, I'd like to bring attention to not only the impact on drivers, but the impact on pedestrians. Um, it's a pedestrian neighborhood. We have children and pets who, um, as it stands, are already impacted by the national life traffic, but which, you know, is manageable because um, it's kind of only two times the day that the national life traffic becomes significant. Um, but, you know, my 11 year old has expressed concern that if there's additional development that fronts um, uh, enters and exits onto Derby Drive, her ability to be um, at ease as a pedestrian in the neighborhood walking with pets um, could be impacted as well. So I would like to um, integrate that into the conversation as well. And um, thank you so much for doing all this and hearing all of our comments. I really appreciate it. Ben Montrose, did you have any public comment to issue tonight? Um, I, just to second the expressions from my neighbors and just the concerns of trying to keep with the neighborhood character, um, I, I agree with the concerns about traffic. There aren't even stop signs up here. So there's a conf like a general sense of confusion as to what to do when you get to Meadow and Derby and Mountain View and additional traffic will exacerbate that for sure. Um, I've seen some pretty foolish things by some pretty foolish drivers. And if there's gonna be an influx in, in traffic and drivers, that is a significant concern. I walk to work at the National Life Building and I can tell you, it gets pretty nutty up here at certain parts of the day. So I just would wish that that would be, be considered as part of it. Yeah, thank you very much for, uh, for being brief and uh, really appreciate your comment. Uh, yeah. Well. <laughs> hey, James, um, you want to go ahead, Sheridan? Um, what, hold on, Jean. Hold on a second. Um, so I I know that is there anybody in the room that actually has to leave? 
Okay, yeah. I just. <laughs> um, uh, hold on, uh, Therese. I know you have your hand up. Um, is this? Do you need to to head out? Oh no, I just thought that was the pr protocol. <laughs> oh, we're right. So what I'm trying to do is I'm I'm trying to go through my screen to make sure we hit everybody and check everybody off in order on my screen. Okay, I'll take. Um, my so, but yeah. when you put your hand up, you pop to the top of my screen. <laughs> Uh, so uh, we have Lori Bowman and Andy. I don't think we've heard from you yet. I thought we just heard everybody on the Zoom call would use the raise hand function if you would like to speak. Oh, and, I mean, we could do that. And then I, I just uh, we wanted can, to make, not everybody yeah. knows how to do that. Okay. So, I mean, because then if they all put their hands up, it's going to reshuffle my whole order. Okay. Well, Meredith's <laughs> got an order here. We'll, we'll stick with that. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so, Lori Bowman, do you have any comments? If so, then you can unmute. Thank you. No, we don't have at this time. Okay. Thank you, Lori. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, sorry, it just reshuffled again because Teresa put her hand back down. Uh, oh, now Teresa's next. Teresa, go ahead. Hi, thanks so much. Uh, my name is Teresa Mejo. I live at Six Mountain View Drive. And I just want to say that we all understand that this is a hearing for a subdivision and that we will have an opportunity later on when the development that we've all seen the picture of and you know is is you know is actually presented to the DRB but here i just want to express some fears that we have that once this development starts rolling once it gets proposed we as a small neighborhood will not have the means to go up against these large corporation and their lawyers and so we'd like the DRB to now listen to our concerns so that when that next step happens, we are not defenseless because we are not gonna be able to hire big lawyers to, you know, to, to um, deal with Bove if it turns out that they're doing something that we feel like is really dangerous to our neighborhood. And so to the extent that the, law and the provisions and the way this oh, this whole process works to the extent that that is possible for the DRB to right now address some of these concerns through this approval process we would really be appreciative of it because we may be more to give us some defenses for the next stage thank you thank you very much for your comment uh so we have the dolls. I recognize the dolls to share their public comments. Um, we, we don't have any at this time, but we're very grateful for everybody's um, patience and clarity. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so Matthew and Catherine. So that's Matthew and Catherine Nunnally. If you have any comments, please unmute and make them. Hi. Hi. So, uh, yeah, we live at 8 Mountain View Street and um, echo much of, of what our neighbors um, have had to say. We really appreciate everyone's comments. Um, it's been enlightening to sit through this meeting and, um, and hear how everything is uh, sort of how things go, how things get done. Uh, it's interesting to see how the neighborhood lines that were drawn and um, interesting like criteria for uh, the character of the neighborhood, uh, especially I thought that was interesting. Um, but yeah, we'll, I guess we'll, we'll wait to comment on a lot of the other things uh, as the process moves forward. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, can I just, hold on, I think we lost Dana at some point. Um, so anyone just, else in the room uh, like to speak just while we uh, get, get our order figured out here? Go ahead. Well, you got to come up to the microphone so they can hear. Um, so that, that people online and so the person who does the minutes yes. can hear you. Um, I want to note that it was more than facetious to, to say three times we're talking about for a project that has not yet been designed 
when a project has been designed, that's, that's a fact. A project has been designed. We're not talking about a project that has not been yet been designed, which was stated to dismiss concerns three times. Mm -hmm. I just want to sort of back up here. I think I opened the meeting, you know, with 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 this. Um, but essentially, we have one set of regulations to review um, a subdivision. We have another set of regulations to review, um, you know, uh, you know, a development of a apartment complex, uh, you know, a single family home, which may not become before this board, but there is a, you know, there is is a process. And the problem is, is that if we try and apply the regulations for Part B uh, to this uh, to this process. Our hands are actually pretty tied, and like we, we can't even respond to any of the you know any any of the comments, um, you know, because the regulations just don't allow us to you know to do to do much. And so, it's not that uh, you know we're ignoring or any anything here. It's that um, the better fit based on the tools that we have in order to address on offsite impacts um, are dealt with through um, a formal proposal and ask for review from the client for a specific you know development. And that's just the background here. I mean, Meredith can. Back me up if yeah. there's anything else. So um, just to sort of, there is a, there is a, there, there was a preliminary proposal that was run through the neighbors and it was run through the design review committee for sort of a first, and for the design review committee, there was sort of a first tier review, right? That had images of a building. It had ideas about maybe how many, how many apartments might be in there. It had some very general sketched out stuff on the surface, right, on the site plan. I would never, ever accept that minimal amount of information for an application for that kind of development. I would need to have a full erosion control plan. I need to have all the stormwater layout put out. I need to know exactly how many parking spaces are going in, exactly where those are, how many ADA accessible parking spaces are put in, where all of the lighting is, exactly what species of, of trees and shrubs are proposed, where they're going. Um, for something really big, it might trigger, trigger a, a traffic study. It all depends on the specifics of that. I would not, I wouldn't even look at it myself to do a staff report until I get all that information. Um, yes, we've all seen the, the preliminary proposal. That team as far as I know, does not have all the additional data that they would need to show to even respond to your concerns. I haven't seen anything like that until we have that and we have the full package so that there can be a cohesive response to concerns, right? So that I can look at it and so that um, our department heads can look at it, right? So I run it through the Department of Public Works Something like this, I would run through um, the the police department, the fire department. Um, probably our building inspector would have an initial look at the plans because he needs to look and see does it need, um, you know, a sprinkler system? Because if it needs a sprinkler system, it needs a different amount of water. And Department of Public Works needs to make sure that the water line can support that. Um, something this big, I may even reach out to to the local school district to say what what would an influx of you know x number of potential students if there's two bedroom apartments that's leaning more towards families right there's a whole bunch of preliminary review that goes into it before we get to a public hearing and before i am even allowed to pass it on to the development review board so that's i have all the same questions you do about traffic and access right for a big proposal but they don't have that data for me yet or i would have that application if they have that right if, if we were talking about um, somebody who owns the property already and wants to subdivide and knows what they're going to do, if it was all one person, one entity, we would have probably been more apt to push to say, hey, if you know what you're going to do here, let's do it all at once. But it's different entities, it's different owners, it's different developers, right, who own it versus who want to potentially develop it. There's, there's, no, there's, no, there's no promise it's actually going to happen, right? There's always chance. Um, you know, th that would be a whole different story if it was one entity doing the whole thing. But they, they don't have that information. Um, so I, I can't, I, I can't, I can't even ask them and say, what's, what's going to happen with this stuff, right? Because I understand the, 
designed. There's designed as in we have this idea, we have this preliminary, and then there's designed to the level of an application. I was taking an issue you know, with the project. I was taking issue with the statement that there is no project being discussed or designed. Okay, I think I think it might have been a misuse of, of phrasing, as in we don't have we don't have something designed to the level right. where we can say we have a complete application and we can apply everything to it, right? If I if I had that, it would it would be in the file and I'd have it as an application stamped and on an agenda. Um, so I get it. I, I understand the the discrepancy, right? Um, but we're also the the board and me as as zoning administrator, we're limited to reviewing the application that we have before us. It's it's part of the requirement of the board. And if it's an administrative permit for me, right? Somebody comes before me with a, a two family home, I can't be like, oh, but in future you could put in five units here. So you have to show me that what you would do then. I'm not allowed to do that. The same sort of situation. As, as, as difficult as it is for us all to deal with that discrepancy in our heads. Uh, all right, is, so um, we had Matthew, Catherine, so Susan Roop, and then I'm going to need to read this into the record. Okay. So we have to go back. Uh, good evening. Um, I will try and keep it as brief as I can. Um, first of all, I'll agree with my with my neighbors. Um, uh, I live at 17 Mountain View, which is at the intersection of Meadow Lane and Mountain View. My family has lived in this house since 1952, so I know a little something about the uh, the area. Um, first of all, uh, uh, I think you'll find that uh, the, the site for Lot 2 is virtually flat now. Uh, it, it used to have a grade to it, but I believe it's virtually flat now and indeed is a mud hollow for after torrential rains. Um, there used to be a motel that is in the, where the gravel road is in the upper lot. And that was what the driveway onto, onto Derby Drive was for, was, uh, and there was one at the other end of the uh, Brown Derby restaurant so that they could go out either way. But there were very few units there. I believe there might have been 10, but might have been fewer. Um, and it did provide some excitement uh, uh, for traffic. Um, uh, second of all, um, the, um, in, the infrastructure concerns me. Um, I know we had the upgrade to water and sewer on Northfield Street, but I can tell you that my water pressure did not improve with that upgrade. Um, and in fact, stayed just about stable, sort of, kind of, but certainly not the same kind of water pressure that you get in most of the city of Montpelier. So the addition, potential addition of any larger units in that area concerns me. Um, and uh, last but not least, I've raised four dogs, five cats, two parents um, from this house and, and uh, traffic has always been a challenge and the, uh, especially when National Life was built, they cut down my favorite climbing tree to do that, by the way. Um, and uh, uh, it, it, over time, it's gone through several phases, the worst of which there were probably a decade when uh, it took 45 minutes in the morning and the evening for the traffic to be other than bumper to bumper from National Life down. And I only mention that because uh, if you're going to have additional traffic flow under Derby Drive, that's that's just going to be a disaster. Um, so I thank you for your time. That's pretty much what I had to say. Thank you, Susan. 
Uh, okay, thank you very much, Susan, for your comment. Next is Bob Dunham. I don't think we've heard from him yet, right? Bob Dunham, would you like to have any comment here? You're unmuted, Bob, so you, oh, you were. There you go. I don't have any comment at this time. Thanks. Thank, Thank you, you very Bob. much. Um, can I just read something? We have, I have somebody who used yes. the chat and then locked off. So uh, Dana Hawk, so it's D-A-N-A-H-O-C-K commented, thank you. This meeting has been very helpful. I would add that at this point, it seems like the property meets all the requirements for the subdivision. I hear what the neighbors are saying about concerns about what comes next, but at this point, I support the subdivision. Um, and then we have somebody, there's somebody on, on an iPhone that I don't have a phone number or a name associated with that. Could be me. Yes. Um, sorry, sorry, I joined late. My name is Diane Dakota. I live at Seven Mountain View and have since 1997. I agree with what everybody said. Go Bob, go Emma, um, the Maureen maybe. She was very eloquent. My concerns are their concerns, traffic, water, and also with the sewage because I've had the sewer back up into my basement three times. They say it's fixed now, but that could be another issue. And I really don't want a chocolate fountain going in my brand new washing machine ever again. Other than that, I'll, I'll chime in when we do round two, but because we do need more housing because that's why my kiddos are still living with me. But I'm also very concerned for pedestrian and vehicular traffic because the national life people drive like maniacs because there is no yield, no stop, and their left is the most important. And if there's going to be a lot of traffic in and out of Derby within, I don't know how many feet, not many of a stop sign, that's also going to be another issue. And other than that, I agree with everybody else and bless you guys for doing this meeting because I would pull out every last hair out of my head if I had to do this on a regular basis. <laughs> well, thank you very much for your comment. Uh, Peter, would you like to come up and give a couple comments here? Yeah, we do have one more person that hasn't spoken yet. Okay. Duncan Rob on Zoom. Sorry, Peter. Just let me get through one more. So Duncan, Rob, do you have anything you wanted to add? You'll need to unmute yourself. Oh, maybe we missed Emily Shelley. She just put her hand up. Okay. And well, oh, things have shuffled around. We have a James Sheridan too. Okay, Duncan's not unmuting himself. So I think people got moved around. Uh, so Emily. Yeah, Emily Shelley. Sorry. Hi. Just a point of um, fact. If you look at the participants list. That doesn't move. Um, that little thing on yeah. the bottom. Okay. Since we've all gotten a little bit better <laughs> at some of these things over the last year or so. This is we we haven't had this many participants like this whole time. So thank you. No. So um, I'm Emily Shelley and I live at Four Derby Drive. I'm uh, directly opposite the proposed lot two, and the access would be pretty much directly across from my from my parcel. Um, and so I'm not gonna reiterate, I support many of what my neighbors have said thus far. Um, I was glad to hear that the possibility of a curb cut to Northfield Drive isn't off the table. You know, as you say, we don't know exactly what would go in there, but I was a little concerned that being a class one town highway, that that would be I know it's not preferred, but at least if it's still on the table, we have some room. And the only other thing I would say is that I was wondering what the best way for us to um, stay participating as the future steps of this process go forward, because I'm a direct to butter. I got a letter. I think the fact that we have so many people here is more due to the fact that we have, thanks to Peter um, and others, uh, a neighborhood association now, um, but I think many of the folks didn't actually get, aren't notified because they're not directly a, direct to butters, but are nonetheless concerned and want to stay involved in the discussion. 
Yeah, thank you, Emily. And I think I could just talk a little bit about the extra opportunities for participation. And um, I think that um, you know, you've got three maybe avenues. Uh, you know, one is the actual application that may or may not come before uh, you know this board, which would be a similar type meeting, but um, you know on different you know issues. Um, also, what you have is the planning uh, commission in Montpelier meets. Um, you know, at least monthly, um, and um, there's policy uh, level uh, decisions that, uh, you know, can be made um, at that, um, which, you know, it's an important process to participate in. Um, and, uh, you know, also there's comments for policy level decisions that can happen at, you know, city council. It's not to say that anything uh, you said isn't going to be considered, you know, in this meeting, but I just wanted to throw those out there as, uh, as options as, as things move forward. Um, can I? Yes, please. Type, okay, so when it comes to the actually getting notice, um, the you know we go by state statute with regard to that mailed notice, um, and so yeah, it's the the direct abutters and property owners across the street that get that specific mailed notice. Um, we have also um, Peter mm -hmm. Kelman has requested to get notice of. It was this final app, subdivision application, as well as it would probably be like the next, the next development application, right? For the for the new lot two, it's not something where we just have people on forever and ever as people to be notified for a parcel that they're not abutting. That's something that would be really really hard to keep track of. That'd be because we do anticipate an application, um, you know. Peter has asked to be to, to be a notice person because of his role in um, CAN, and so um, you know. And the, you know, another option is to check. And anybody who emails me can do this. We have a um, city web page that is a pending applications for public hearing page that's through our department, the Department of Planning and Community Development. So if at any time you're curious about what might be coming up on a public for a public hearing, whether it's the design review committee or the development review board, we post those applications there um, when the public notice has been mailed. Um, so that's, you know, two to three weeks before the agendas get posted. Um, and then I would need to double check on this. There used to be under an old our old website system, a way to get on an email list. So every time an agenda was posted for a particular committee, you would get an email on that. That's a lot of emails if you only are concerned about one application. Um, you know, those are options. You can also always just email myself or Audra Brown to ask, hey, has something been submitted yet? If you're not in the butter. Um, but I, I think for this particular project, probably keeping in touch with Peter, keeping in touch with Emma, especially because Emma isn't a butter and she will be getting the notice. Um, those might be your the best avenues. Um, and then, like I said, you feel free to, to email or call into our office. I hope that helps. There, and there will be, when we actually have a project, it will need to go before the design review committee um for just about anything that gets built there um and then the larger type projects would need to go through and by larger i say anything other than a single or two family home are going to need to come to the development review board um because those all trigger site plan and it would have to be a new structure because there's nothing on the parcel i hope that addressed your concerns uh, so then, sorry, there was James Sheridan, I don't think got to speak. Yes. Sorry about that, James. James can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay, my name is James Sheridan. I live at 13 Mountain View. I grew up on 10 Derby Drive where my mother still lives, who's lived there for over 65 years. My brother and wife live with her, and I'm representing the four of us. I have full power of attorney for my mother on everything, and she has dementia. And so I manage the two properties. I'm right across the street from her. I'd like to make, first of all, a comment on the water situation. 
I was a city councilor for 12 years representing this district. So I have some history of the water situation. The water situation is divided into three quadrants. This section, the section up on Town Hill, and the section over by Terra Street. We have the worst water situation in the city because we are the only quadrant that doesn't have a water tower to stabilize our water. I know that for a fact because I have arranged for, during my time on the council, I cut a deal with Westview Metals to get some land for them to build the water tower there so we could stabilize our water up here. It is not as good as the rest of the city. I have lived in another part of the city, so I know that for a fact. So I am a very surprised Kurt Montaya, who I know, who was hired during my time on the council, did not make a notice of that to you people, that the water situation is different because there is no water tower up here. Okay, that's the first thing. I want to ask a question I think is related to subdivision. You talked about how when the road enters from Derby Drive and it swings around and goes to Mountain View, but it crosses over onto the hotel's property. Is it too late after the subdivision is made for you to ask, say that a right of way has to be given for that road to be used as access out of the proposed possible parking lot that goes to New down to Northfield Street. Because, you know, if it's done deal and they can't get a right away at that point, then can you say that they have to or is it too late? So that's a question I have for you. Um, I'd like to make a comment on a comment that was made by somebody that I think part of it should be struck from the record. And that was by Dan Jones making a comment that what's 20 cars? I would like to know where he got that figure of 20 cars. Does he have inside knowledge that is that is how many cars that are going to be used in that property? Because I could say to you, maybe there's going to be 40 units. That equals maybe two cars a unit because everybody has their own car. And let's say it's couples. That's 80 cars. That's four times as many cars as he talks about. Now, I'm not throwing that figure out that I think it should be used because I don't know that for a fact. I don't think he knows that for a fact, so I don't think that should be considered as a comment. I grew up in the neighborhood like Susie. I know the history. It's always been a traffic nightmare, especially when national life is full and it is starting to fill up again. The parking lot is starting to get full again. And over time, as the pandemic maybe recedes, it's going to get more cars. So that has always been a stressed intersection at Northfield and Derby Drive. But again, I would like to know, can you ask for a right away after a subdivision is granted. And maybe there's a legal person here, Phil Zallinger might know. I know him and he was on the DRB for a long time. So I think that's something that needs to be answered before the subdivision is made. Thank you. Thank you, James. Um, does the applicant have any uh, comments uh, at this time? In response to Jim Sheridan's comment? Anything. Uh, I, I didn't understand his question about a right of way, did you? Um, yes, I think that uh, he's asking if um, there, as I understand it, there's an existing, you know, gravel or paved road that goes through the parcel um, and that um, after um, lot two, um, cells or lot one if if one or the other were would it at that point be impossible um, for one of the owners um, to establish a right of way through the parcel no the question was will yeah. the drb be able to demand or you know uh, yes. position that a right of way has to be granted after the fact that was the question 
No. So you understand my question, Phil? Well, I, I believe I do, Jim, but the, the DRB can't condition a permit upon, well, the, the DRB could condition a permit upon the applicant obtaining a right of way over an adjoining property. That would leave the applicant between a rock and a hard place because you can't compel the neighbor to grant the right of way. Nor, nor can the DRB compel the neighbor to grant a right of way. Well, that was my question, so you answered it. And I'm just saying by the time the subdivision is made, it's obviously too late to get that right away to so they can have access to Northfield Street so all the parking lot does not empty under the drive. But thank you for your answer, Phil. Do you have anything to add, Meredith? Uh, if if you're good, then I'm um, I'm not gonna I'm, talk I'm, to that. I'm good I think with it at this point. Um, I I think that the point that uh, James is making here that is that it's through the subdivision process at which, if necessary, the DRB may, you know, see fit the needed for of, of right of way. Um, now, um, you know, I think it may be the case that you know for um, access and circulation, um, you know, as we have to address for the subdivision, um, not knowing what you know, is proposed here or what a traffic study for repose might be, um, you know, maybe not as much as what the DRPs require, but the applicant might not might not want to, uh, you know, reduce their opportunities for, you know, access if possible. For instance, if there's an existing access, like maybe it would be beneficial to, at this juncture, um, you know, make that uh, a possibility going going forward. And I think that that's, that's the point as I understand it, that uh, that James is, you know, is trying to make, which I see. That's exactly right. Thank you. In other words, if it's too late, then why can't you know what is it? What are you holding this hearing for if you're not going to consider stuff that when it's and then it becomes too late? Okay. Uh Thank you for your comments, uh, James. I think we'll move on to the next. Um, is there anyone else on the on the Zoom? Jay Erickson has a question. He signed on late. Jay Erickson, do you have any public comment? Jay, you're muted. I don't know if you have anything you wanted to say. We'll see if these chimes in. It is getting uh, a little bit late, so I think we do want to start wrapping this up. Um, Peter Kelman, do you have anything to add? Peter Kelman, uh, my wife and I live at Six Mountain New Street, and almost any increase in traffic on Derby Drive is likely to make even more dangerous a partially obstructed left-hand turn from Derby Drive onto our section of Mountain View Street. There is nothing fictional. There is nothing fictional about the traffic situation, as I think you've heard. There is no reason why a traffic study could not be done, regardless of even whether or not this uh, a subdivision had been applied for. This is a very dangerous uh, area, and uh, a traffic study is called for. I'm also the CAN coordinator for the Mountain View neighborhood, many of whose residents have been asking me since June about the reported boat proposal to develop a large market rate apartment building on the former Brown Derby property, which took me completely by surprise because like most of the people in my neighborhood, we were not notified. We, we didn't even know it was happening. Only a few of the abutters did receive notice. And as far as I know, Emily Shelley was the only abutter in our neighborhood who actually went to that. I didn't know anything about it until people asked me. Consequently, I've tried unsuccessfully to arrange with Mr. Bove to meet with interested members of our neighborhood, not just a few of others, to discuss his plans and listen to neighborhood concerns. So Meredith, I'm sorry, but there was not a meeting with uh, more than one neighbor from our neighborhood. Not because we, um, <clears throat> we wanted to discuss this, not because we are NIMBYs, as Dan Jones implies, 
we've made it clear to all parties that we would support the development of housing on that now abandoned Brown Derby lot. We are simply asking to be included in timely discussions, which waiting for a major site review is not timely about such development. So it will be done responsibly by the applicant and the BOVE organization. Seems like an oxymoron. In the spirit of this request for inclusion, I am asking the DRB to consider two points regarding approval of the subdivision application. Both go back to Meredith saying that you are limited in what you can do on a subdivision. Limited means does not mean you have no options. You do have options. Emma raised one of them, which was brushed aside by the attorney, and that is the concern regarding foreseeable difficulties. I think you've heard enough tonight to know that there are certainly foreseeable difficulties regarding traffic. And I think if you've seen the drawings of the fictional uh, proposal that the lawyer itself has said she, he was involved in the contract for, thereby opening that up, then you know that the parking lot is scheduled to be up on where the access to Derby would be. So that Jim uh, Sheridan's questions are very, very important because if that's where the parking lot is going to be and Derby turns out through a traffic study to be impossible, that is a foreseeable difficulty. And I, and I think that is where you, the DRB, have an opportunity to say, wait a minute, there is something we can do about this. However, the staff report didn't even comment on the foreseeable difficulty uh, uh, requirement in section 3505. So I would ask the DRB to carefully consider such foreseeable difficulties before deciding whether to approve this application, the subdivision, and ask staff to go back and take a look at that very foreseeable difficulty issue. The second point is that the repeated reminders that this hearing is only about the subdivision of 101 Northfield Street feels very much like a brushing aside of what we all know to be the case, which is that this proposed subdivision is key to permitting the bold development that has been encouraged by the Planning and Community Development Office and whose design was shared with the DRC last spring. I would therefore ask the DRB not to ignore the elephant in the room in your deliberations. In fact, Meredith said that if this was one entity, then you would have something to say about it. Well, there is one entity, and it's in the contract that this attorney put together for two parties. It's not fiction. So in closing, I urge the DRB to postpone approval of this final subdivision application until at least the following recommendations made by Emma Zavez and others have been undertaken. A traffic study, approval conditioned to require light and sound screening, and a professional review of the accuracy of the survey map submitted for lot two. I do not think it is fair to ask the, uh, the, the people who's, where the survey shows claims there is an impingement, have them have to call up the surveyor and find out. I think that is a matter for the DRB. Thank you. Appreciate the, the comment there, uh, Peter, and um, certainly a lot of information for us to deliberate on and whatnot. Um, do board members have any um, additional questions or Feeling like they have the information they uh, you know they need to uh, conduct a review of, of this application. I'd like to motion to close the public hearing and go into deliberation, Rob. I don't think I've heard enough. Stephen said he's heard enough. Wants to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, I, didn't, I didn't know if we needed to consult. Got to do your homework. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
So Jean has made a motion to close the public hearing um, and take this up for um, review in a deliberative session. Um, just sort of a note of process here. Um, that would mean that no more new evidence would be, uh, you know, collected um, on this hearing in the application. Um, and um, also we would, you know, discuss this at the end of this uh, meeting tonight in a deliberative session with just the, you know, DRB members. Um, and that is something that in this uh, sort of Zoom and hybrid environment that uh, we have done for every application. So that is not indicative of, uh, you know, any particular um, aspect of this application. So I'll entertain a uh, second on uh, on Gene's motion. Seconded. So a second by uh, Joe. Okay, is there any uh, discussion on uh, Gene's uh, motion to close the public hearing and um, take this up in a deliberative session after the close of this meeting? Not only will you close the public hearing, but you're going to close the record as well. Yeah, the yes. closing the public hearing. Well, yeah, I, I, I know, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm not supposed to discuss. It's not my job. Yeah, yeah. Board members have to discuss. I didn't know if we needed to give the applicant a chance to respond to anything else. But that would oh. be after the meeting. Yeah, so. we'll uh, we'll discuss this and then let the applicant have some have some final comments. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Um, so, uh, is there's no seeing no discussion from the board unless there's anyone on Zoom has anything to say? No. Um, so we'll now call the roll. Once you call the roll, they can't. Oh, respond. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry. So, <laughs> so sorry. I'm trying to monitor right. a bunch of different stuff. Yep. No. Uh, so we'll now take final comments from the applicant uh, on this application. John, do you have any comments you wish to make? Uh, I don't think that I do, Phil. No, and, and blessedly, I don't either. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Phil. I shouldn't laugh, but that was awesome. <laughs> uh, all righty. Uh, so I will call the roll on the motion to um, close the public hearing. Um, <clears throat> end the record and um, take this up in a deliberative session. Um, Catherine, how do you vote? Yes. Okay, Abby, how do you vote? Yes. Jean? Yes. Joe? Yes. Michael? Yes. And Rob also votes yes. And the motion passes unanimously. Um, I've lost my agenda. Yeah, <laughs> Got it right here. Uh, oh, other business. That's it. So our next uh, meeting of the DRB will be Monday, December 6, 2021. And Meredith, do we have applications to review for the December 6th? We do. Okay. We will have applications. Um, and yeah, but just I don't know if you want to remind them of the process since we're doing the deliberative session after yeah. the applicant. Um, so and attendees yes so everyone we will um be deliberating on this application uh tonight um and we will come to a decision um hopefully tonight but i do not believe we have to we could continue our deliberative session if we feel like we need it given the late hour um and uh you know a decision will be made on this uh in writing uh and sent out by the zoning administrator um and uh yeah there it is so, you have anything to ask yeah just i mean <laughs> Technically, there are the, the board has 45 days after the close of the public hearing to issue a written decision. We aim to do that much, much sooner than that 45 day window. That's a, a statutory deadline. Um, and, you know, depending just for because there are so many people on tonight interested in this. Um, sometimes the decision gets issued at the exact same time as the permit. If there's no conditions on that decision that have to be met before the permit can be issued. Sometimes the um, decision and the permit get issued same day, um, but the the um, copy of the decision will be mailed out to participating interested parties. Um, anybody who signed on to the petition that Emma submitted, um, the decision will just go to Emma and Emma will be responsible for then sending that out. Um, that's just the way those interested party petitions work. 
everybody else who participated in the hearing individually um, will get their own distinct copy of the decision. Um, and then it will also be available in our office um, and you know we'll we'll mail out hard copies to people um, if people want also electronic copies, please let me know. Um, but it's written copies that get mailed out that's what we're required to do that under statute. Um, so, so a butters who technically participated, um, they would, they would, they'll get those decisions. Um, but just because if it was the decision part, you only get if you participate. It's not just to all a butters. It's a little different. But I think you captured most of the butters in the petition. So, <laughs> okay. And will we be notified about? Um, that will so there's a 30 day appeal period. This is all in in fine print at the bottom of decisions. So there's a 30 day appeal period from the date of signature on the written decisions. Um, there's also a 15 day appeal period for permit issuance. A lot of times, if we get it all done quickly, that is overlap. So it's really just a 30 day appeal period. But that's the way that works. You're Thank you all for tonight. coming out. Sorry, I've got to set up the deliberative Zoom. So, but we can, you guys can close out the hearing and I can send it if people are willing to okay. wait a few minutes. I'll entertain a motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. Anybody? Second. All right. Motion by Abby, second by Jean. Um, I'll call the roll. Catherine, how do you vote? Yes. Abby? Yes. Jean? Yes. I'll have to send it to you and Michael? Rob, huh? Michael? Yes or no? Or are you already gone? Joe? He's gone. Yes. <laughs> and Rob votes yes. Um, we have one absent and um, the rest. Uh, what, six positive? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we, the meeting is adjourned.